While on my way to somewhere else, planning my route, I realized I could make a short detour and look into a video project that caught my attention four or five years ago. I had read a book named Cruel Sacrifice, written by Alfredite Jones. I followed it up with research on the internet and created a file, but had to put it to the side due to other obligations. Like most who read this book, I was shocked. How could this happen? I barely remember the names of the girls involved, but knew from my research that one girl named Tony had been released from prison in the year 2000, who supposedly disapproved of the violence to Shanda and participated very little that night, had the opportunity to call for help and didn't. Why? I'm about 10 miles away from Madison now, heading east on 56. Looking for this girl, Tony. She was involved. She's out of prison now. She's been out from what I recall. There was a questionable bite mark on Tony's hand and rumors about her threatening behavior after her release from prison. I'm sure a lot of people rather forget what happened here. About a decade ago, could be longer, I forget the dates now. It's been four years since I read the book and did the, the research, which is all packed away. I didn't know I'd be going here. Okay, I just stopped at a little shell station here in Hanover and talked to this young gal and asked her about well, if she heard about the tragedy. And she was giving me some information. Apparently, Tony is still in town. And so is an, uh, the other gal whose name escapes me at this time. I may be able to, uh, to find them. Whether they'll speak with me on camera is a whole different ballgame. I had read an internet post years ago that I believe came from the real Tony. It appeared to be sincere and from a kind personality. Three miles from Madison, it's down in the uh, Ohio River bottoms. If this personality was the real Tony, she could be most helpful to others caught up in a similar violent situation, where a group can be more violent than any one individual on their own. Someone I would wish to interview. Main Street, I'm going to look for the library. One o'clock. Downtown Madison. Should be able to find a library here. Wow. It's a pretty nice little town, isn't it? There were other controversial things I had read of the crime. Tony's house. My parents One house concerning the downtown. bike marks on Tony's hand. Tony claimed she bit herself on the hand. The 10-hour ordeal had reached its climax at this time, and Tony said she freaked out and bit her own hand, hard enough to draw blood. Some theories about her self-inflicted bite marks suggest that Shanda may have bitten Tony She's from the Madison Burbs. and would lend credence to the rumors about her participation with Shanda's murder. I had read that dental impressions from Shanda were never compared to Tony's injury. Was she a girl with something to hide? Or a frightened individual, always on the defense? This is Tony's house right here. That's where she grew up anyway, 2212. I knew I had to speak with her and look into her eyes before I could make such a decision. This is at this white house here. This is a side street they enter off her, but the address is actually Green Street. There's where she lives. Looks kind of beat up. I'm wondering if they've been ostracized from the community more or less. While spending the night in Madison, I went out on the town to try to talk to some of the locals. I even paid a visit to the bowling alley where Tony and Hope first revealed information to others about the murder. After some gentle prodding, 
Most locals were willing to chat about the murder. They hated Tackett and were angry about the shame the girls had brought upon their quiet little town. Many had their own negative rumors about Tony, but no one would go on camera. I'm not one to believe in rumors, which brought about another question I now had for her. What was it like living here knowing the rumors and whispers were all around town? While in town, I had learned that Hope Rippy was released from prison, an early release. According to the record, her involvement with the murder was more active than Tony's. I was also informed that Melinda Lovelace was trying for an early release, and her court date was in a few weeks. Information known locally, but not in the national news. This was the first I heard of it. Okay, I'm leaving town. 24 hours was just not enough time, especially with the new information about Loveless trying to have her sentence reduced. I didn't get to see any of the girls. I was hoping to run into somebody who would know somebody or something like that. Didn't happen or else they're quite tight-lipped. Me being a stranger, and the video camera probably wasn't a help. It's an interesting town, some nice people here, scenic town. They all seem to be quite angry with this crime and what these girls did. They don't want to associate with them. Tony's been out, still here, works here. Hope has to be nearby, she's under probation. We'll see, maybe I'll come back. I thought about Shanda's mother, Jackie who has seen her daughter's tormentors working the system for sentence reductions. When will Lori Tackett try for a sentence reduction? I read an excerpt from Shanda's diary where she writes about wishing to be 13 years old, a birthday she will never see. Thanks in particular to Melinda Lovelace, who now thinks her rights were violated. I knew I had to find time to return. Dear diary, I can't believe it, but it's true. It's time for a new school year. Let me tell you what I'm looking forward to the most and what I'm dreading the most. Well, this year, I'm going to a different school. I'm sort of scared I won't fit in because I heard that there are hoods, pretty girls, and all those guys. I wish my mom would understand that I don't want to be 12. I want to be 13. I wish I could tell people I was 13, and my mom would go along with that, but I know how my mom is. She's not that kind of person but I would love it if she would. I would work hard, but I'm already gonna do that. I love my mom very much, but she doesn't understand how much that I wanna be 13 and have people spend the night on school nights and talk on the phone past 10 o'clock. <laughs>